Okay, hi there and welcome to the fourth in our series of revision videos updating students on some of the key latest developments in the UK economy in 2019. And in this video we're going to be updating students on monetary and fiscal policy including data on interest rates, quantitative easing, budget deficit, the national debt and also yields on government bonds. So the key figure in terms of monetary policy is that the base rate of interest remains below 1%. It's currently 0.75%. <clears throat> Pardon me, has been there at that rate since August 2018. Uh, quantitative, quantitative easing or QE, that's where the Bank of England essentially creates new money electronically and uses that money to buy financial assets, is now uh, £445 billion. Pounds. That's remained unchanged for some time. The vast majority of that has been the central bank buying um, corp uh, buying government bonds, essentially to inject liquidity into the banking system, into the financial networks. Here's the chart showing monetary policy base rate of interest for the UK. It's a decade now since, since interest rates were cut uh, from 5.5% to less than 1%. So we've had a decade of very, very low interest rates, historically low interest rates. And there's no real threat, if you like, of interest rates moving significantly higher. If the Bank of England does decide to tighten monetary policy a little bit, they'll move gradually. They'll move in 0.25 percentage points changes. And also they'll move in a limited fashion, uh, perhaps you know, a 1% over, over a year or so. They have downgraded <clears throat> their forecast for growth this year to less than 1.5%. They don't think inflation will be 2%. They think it's going to be less than that. So I don't think there's much chance of interest rates rising this year. But of course, there's a lot of Brexit uncertainty at the moment. We see what happens with the negotiations. Uh, in terms of interest rates, I suppose one of the points I wanted to mention here in terms of evaluation is that in the UK now, if you look at this chart, 60%, nearly two thirds of all mortgages, that's a home loan, are on fixed interest rates, um, perhaps greater than two years, perhaps between one or two years. So a lot of people now have a mortgage which is essentially fixed for the moment. Uh, I've heard of people having fixed rates of five years or more and therefore when interest rates change if they do alter those people won't necessarily be directly affected in terms of their mortgage costs. That's a great contextual point to add into any essay on monetary policy. The exchange rate is really quite important that's part of monetary policy and uh, when the pound falls that has an equivalent effect of a cut in interest rates. Take a look at this chart, which shows the sterling exchange rate in 2000, or since January 2016. Now, what this chart shows is that after the Brexit vote in June of 2016, there was a substantial depreciation of sterling, of upwards of about 12-15%. A fall in the exchange rate, a depreciation of the currency, is effectively an expansionary monetary policy. The Bank of England estimate that a let's say a six to seven percent fall in the exchange rate has the equivalent effect on aggregate demand and uh, an output of around about a one percent fall in interest rates. So that reduction in the exchange rate, although it did add to inflationary pressure in 2016, uh, certainly helped to provide some stability to, to output growth in the UK. Since then, the exchange rate has been relatively stable. Okay, obviously ups and downs on a day-to-day -day basis, but relatively stable. And uh, but the pound is is gyrating more and more from day to day as the as the Brexit timetable comes into full view. Uh, if there is a, a Brexit agreement and uh, as perhaps a move towards a soft Brexit, perhaps the UK eventually staying inside the currency union, uh, the customs union, and the single market, becoming more likely, I think then the pound may well rebound quite sharply in the second half of this year. A word or two on fiscal policy. Uh, back in the autumn of 2018, uh, we were told that uh, by the Chancellor of the Exchequer, no less, that fiscal austerity was coming to an end. Well, that remains to be seen. This chart shows uh, government spending uh, in orange there as a share of GDP. And you can see there has been a substantial reduction in government spending as a share of national output, particularly since 2011, 2012. And there's also been a modest, but a gentle, but, but significant increase in the tax burden. So the government is now taking more in tax as a share of GDP. Two aspects here of fiscal austerity. 
The gap between the two shows the fiscal deficit. So the G line has been above the taxation line and therefore, of course, the government's had to borrow money. But that deficit has eventually come down. And this chart helps to explain this. If you look at the blue histogram here, that shows the fiscal deficit of the government, how much they have to borrow as a share of GDP. We've adjusted for the cycle, but obviously when there's a recession, the, the fiscal deficit tends to rise automatically through the working of the automatic stabilizers. But notice here that gradually the fiscal deficit has come down and it's now just under 2% of GDP. That's the lowest it's been for several years, almost almost 20 years in fact. So it looks as if the government is getting getting into a better position on the deficit and as a result, the debt, the accumulated debt of the government uh, is starting to, to stabilise and may eventually start to fall. So look at the orange line here. This is public sector net debt, the total amount of debt the government still owes from previous deficits. That is now stabilising at about 85% of GDP. Obviously, it's significantly higher than it was 10 or 12 years ago, but it's likely to stabilise at about that level. Now, if the government can move towards budget balance, if they can get the growth rate up a little bit in future years, we would expect the government debt ratio to start falling perhaps towards about 75 or 80% of GDP. So just in terms of where we are in 2019, it looks as if the fiscal position of the government in terms of trying to control the deficit and trying to limit the upside on the debt looks to be improving. And you kind of expect that, wouldn't you, that unemployment's at a 45 year low, uh, we've avoided recession for 10 years and uh, corporate profits are, are pretty healthy. Finally, this chart shows the yield on debt. This chart shows effectively the rate of interest the government has to pay on new issues of, in this case, 10-year debt. The point I want you to, the point I want you to take from this chart is there has been a significant sustained fall in the yield on debt from around 5-6% at the turn of the millennium. Uh, rising and falling over time, but uh, actually falling significantly to below 2%. So for the last two or three years, the yield on UK government debt has been less than 2% if the government wants to borrow for 10 years. And that is a low rate of interest. And um, okay, it might edge up a little bit later on in the year, but effectively, if you take off inflation from this, the real yield on 10-year debt is pretty close to zero. If the government wished to borrow more money, perhaps to fund increased infrastructure in transport, in energy, in social housing, for example, then the real cost of borrowing money for 10 years would be close to zero. And some economists argue this is what the government should be doing, should be increasing its investment spending to add to the productive capacity of the economy. There we go, there's an update on monetary and fiscal policy.